Hi everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez. This is the Weekly Report, a look at news about programs and services provided by the departments of the City of Kansas City, Missouri. The first rails have been laid for Kansas City's new streetcar system. Take a look, these are the very first streetcar rails to arrive in Kansas City. The rail segments were lined up on Main Street and welded together, then inserted into grooves on the Main Street Bridge over I-670. Since the Main Street Bridge was already closed for reconstruction, the Public Works Department asked the city's rail contractor for rails to insert now. This will save time later and keep that bridge open when the rest of the downtown streetcar line is constructed next year. You've got to be pretty pumped about what's happening today. Oh, you've got to be. I mean, this is really fantastic. It's, uh, it is a visible, tangible, real sign that uh, we are getting closer and closer to realizing the dream of uh, uh, streetcar transportation in the city again. And that's uh, something that a lot of people have worked for a long time to see happen. And now we actually have rails in the ground on a brand new bridge. The city's health department signed a contract with the Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services to continue providing women, infants, and children's services, also known as WIC services, to 600 Kansas City residents each month. For more information, please visit kcmo.org health. Health Department Director Dr. Rex Archer received the Milton and Ruth Romer Prize for Creative Local Public Health Work. This prestigious award from the American Public Health Association is presented annually to a local health officer who demonstrates creative and innovative public health work. Dr. Archer was chosen for his work helping local health departments receive national accreditation and his collaborations with community outreach groups to address social issues that affect public health. He was also chosen for his support of tobacco policy issues, LGBT health, and the city's innovative emergency medical services protocols. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Janet O'Hagan with Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities, here to give you a glimpse of some of the exciting events taking place for your family at City Facilities during this year's holiday season. The Outlaw National Royal Rumble returns to Kemper Arena for four performances, November 22nd through the 24th. See the most awesome metal-munching monster truck superstars in all-out war. Don't miss the fire-breathing Megasaurus as it eats a car and everything in its path. It's over three stories tall and 50,000 pounds of metal munching mayhem. Tickets are available at Ticketmaster.com or at the Municipal Auditorium box office. Kids two and under are free. Beauty and the Beast is coming to the Music Hall from December 10th through the 15th. Based on the Academy Award-winning animated feature film, this eye-popping spectacle has won the hearts of over 35 million people worldwide. This classic musical love story is filled with unforgettable characters, lavish sets and costumes, and dazzling production numbers including Be Our Guest and the beloved title song. Experience the romance and enchantment of Disney's Beauty and the Beast. To learn more information or to purchase tickets, visit kansascity.broadway.com or the Municipal Auditorium box office. Come cheer on UMKC's men's basketball December 14th, 18th, and 29th at the historic, newly renovated Municipal Auditorium. The University of Missouri, Kansas City and the City of Kansas City partnered to renovate Municipal Auditorium for the upcoming college basketball season. For ticket information, go to umkckangaroos.com. To learn more about events taking place at Kansas City's Convention and Entertainment Facilities, visit kcconvention.com and click on the events calendar or call 816-513-5000. When a small extremist hate group decides to hold their national rally in Kansas City, one can expect a large turnout of anti-protesters. Ensuring a nonviolent demonstration and protecting the group's First Amendment rights required extensive planning on the part of the Kansas City, Missouri police. 
Special Operations Commander Major Jim Connolly explains. It was an expensive uh, endeavor for the police department. However, if you look at the um, the things that could have happened, the expense incurred by injuries to either citizens or officers or if uh, lawsuits were filed by not being able to control both sides of uh, the crowd, we could have incurred a great deal more expense. The planning that occurred for this event went on actually for months and then in uh, the weeks preceding the event um, we actually met with uh, the National Socialist Movement people to find out exactly what their intentions were. We had uh, 60 tactical officers that were in, in and around the crowd, controlling the crowd. I had five mounted patrol officers, K-9, and uh, a bomb technician, in addition to several traffic officers. The major portion of our plan was to uh, keep it fluid. We had a basic framework in place. However, uh, while the event was occurring, we were continually monitoring our plan and making adjustments uh, in order to keep everyone safe and uh, make sure that this event went off as planned and no one received any injuries. I would say that with the information that was being put out, the hate speak that was put out by the National Socialist Movement, and there were also individuals in the anti-rally crowd which were there for the sole purpose to incite others uh, into violence and acts of disobedience. Um, our citizens generally though, they behaved very well and I think both sides were uh, given a safe environment in which to express their First Amendment rights. The teamwork that occurred within the police department uh, and the planning that went into this was not just one individual or two individuals. It was ideas obtained from a large group of individuals which made this plan a success. Also, I would like to thank the people at City Hall because we got uh, both equipment and uh, resources from them in a quick and expedient uh, manner. Also, our citizens of Kansas City demonstrated they can exercise their First Amendment rights in a peaceful manner. If the police department hadn't taken the steps that we did to ensure a safe environment for these protesters and the National Socialist Movement um, that I believe with the amount of violence and uh, hostile speak that occurred during the event that the situation could have been much worse. The cooperation between KCPD, the fire department, the city and Jackson County paid off. So much so, after the rally, they received this tweet from an active anti-government source. I'm Officer Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. Looking ahead, the city begins its second round of curbside leaf and brush pickup on the week of November 18th in the city's south zone. Collection for residents in the North Zone will be the week of December 2nd, and collection for residents in the Central Zone will be the week of December 9th. To find out when your pickup day is, visit kcmo.org trash and click on Leaf and Brush Collection. In observance of Thanksgiving Day, city offices and the 311 call center will be closed on Thursday, November 28th and Friday, November 29th. Residents' trash and recycling collections will be delayed just one day as Thursday curbside trash and recycling collection will take place on Friday the 29th and Friday collections will take place on Saturday the 30th. For more information about this or any of today's stories, please log on to kcmo.org, scroll down to the bottom right-hand corner and click on the weekly report. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.